We've had the iPhone 10 for just a handful of hours so far, but these are my first impressions out of the box with what the 10 brings to the table. The iPhone 10 feels a lot like the iPhone 8 or 7 in the hand, but a little denser and thicker. Still, it feels like the perfect size since it still manages to cram nearly a full edge-to-edge -edge screen on the front. But yeah, that notch. There's a cutout bit where Apple's advanced depth sensing selfie camera lies. Most apps don't use that area much but videos and photos can be expanded to use that notch part of the screen. It mostly means that when apps and videos get cropped down to avoid it, the 10's display sometimes doesn't feel larger than the Plus screens at all. An all-new True Depth front camera is the 10's biggest future feature. Depth sensing infrared can scan out a short distance, which is used for a few things right now. Most importantly, those cameras can now unlock your phone and pay for things. Face ID replaces Touch ID. The 3D face mapping is the only way to unlock your phone and pay for things besides using a normal passcode. It's pretty fast to set up, and it worked well on my face, but you still need to swipe up to unlock. Extra settings can turn on or off the attention feature, which requires you to look at the phone in order for it to work. Face ID is supposed to work with your face when you make casual changes, like getting a haircut. So what happens when Face ID sees some changes in your face? Well, I started with my haircut. Next, I'm going to work on my beard. We're adding a beard again. Crazy new glasses. A hat, a scarf, a hat and scarf. What if I just changed everything? No! Face ID has limits, but it mostly works, provided I was looking directly at it. But Face ID and No Touch ID also means no more home button, which means you need to relearn how to use the phone. New gestures control things. It's swipe up to get to the home screen, swipe down from the corner for control center, and swipe up and hold for other apps, or swipe the bottom strip to swap apps. A side button controls Siri and Apple Pay. It's a lot to get used to right away, and some of the gestures aren't always one hand friendly for quick on the go access. There are few camera upgrades on the iPhone 10. Selfies can get portrait mode now, which adds depth effect to headshots. It looks really good, but the portrait lighting beta so far, which tries to add studio style lighting, looks like it still needs work. The true depth camera can also be used for augmented reality and other face mapping tricks. There aren't that many so far. Animoji is Apple's Snapchat-like face mapping trick for iMessage, which lets you face puppet animated emoji as you speak. The 10 second clips are cute, but Snapchat's also taking advantage of true depth with improved face mapping filters too. And Apple's Clips app uses it to green screen faces into animated effects. Maybe there'll be more down the road, but there aren't many yet. Hey, I'm Scott Stein, and that's our very first look. Get it flat.